I'm here on Young Street, which is once considered the longest street in the world, and it divides Toronto, Canada by the east and the west. I'm here to check out a joint that's been here since 1939. This is the Rosedale Diner. Poutine au canard. So we're making duck cheese fries. Yeah, with gravy. With gravy. Yeah. So some fresh duck, we got some not fresh been frozen. Duck. We got the legs and the uh, and the thighs. Yeah, we've trimmed them up, taken a bunch of the fat off, rendered that down. Okay. We're gonna start with some salt, some uh, peppercorns. Give it a Canadian kick with some maple syrup. Ooh. Uh, some pureed garlic, fresh picked rosemary, some fresh picked thyme, and lastly some bay leaves before we mix this all up. So now you're just gonna get in the tub with the duck? Yeah, rub it up. Rub a dub duck. Yeah, rub there you a go. Dub. You got it. Hit it. All right, we're gonna get in here. Make sure we show every one of these guys a little bit of love. And how long is this gonna sit here and set up? Uh, we're gonna wrap this guy up and throw it into the cooler for about, about a full day. Got it. So, stovetop confit. Stovetop duck confit. We have our duck that's marinated for a full day. A bunch of rendered duck fat, and I mean a bunch of rendered duck fat. Get everybody in there. There we go. Okay, so that sits there. Let it go for about two and a half hours. Let it cool. Then skin off, shred the meat, off the bone. You got it. Ready to go. Yep. Take it. Next up. Next up, gravy. Melt some butter down. Add our duck fat in. Add our flour and make quick brew. Let this guy cook out for a minute. Cook out. Cook yeah. out. Next up, our demi glass, which we make in house. Veal bones and all? That's right, veal bones and all. We, we also add a bit of uh, chocolate, red wine to it. Okay. Add a little bit of our chicken stock, which. Of course, we make in house. Of course. Now we're adding the duck essence from our confit duck. So that's all of the gelatins that come out of the duck, out of the bone, out of the, the joints? Yeah, that's all right. Finish this guy with some salt. A little black pepper. We're gonna let this gravy cook down for about an hour. From this state? From this state, just to, you know, concentrate all those flavors. Okay, now we'll make the fries. Yeah. We've got some nice quarter inch blanched russet fries. Yeah, we have a special touch to them. We add sliced white onions. We've been doing this for 25 years. It's Doobie's idea. Okay, <laughs> drop them. All right. How long do these take to come up? Uh, three or four minutes. Hit it with some salt, give it a nice toss. We're gonna plate this guy. Mmm, that's a good fry. I like that little onion kick there. Top with some Quebecois cheese curds. Ooh, Quebecois cheese curds. Yeah. No clue what that meant. The real deal, from Quebec. So now that goes in the oven, come out, hit it with the duck, and hit it with the gravy. You got it. <laughs> oh my god. Boom. Wow. That's crazy. The duck is unbelievably tender. And the richness of this canard, French for duck, gravy is outrageous. Very decadent. It's such a refined meal. I mean, I say if it's funky, I'll find it, but this is, this is fancy funky. I mean, all I need to do is have a little candle, maybe some white wine, and can someone please dim the lights? That's what I'm talking about. Can you feel it? Pure elegance. Dig it. On Triple D, we love visiting the joints that are part of history. We're here in North Vancouver, British Columbia, right over the Lionsgate Bridge, to check out a joint that is the oldest family-run restaurant in Vancouver. This is the Tomahawk. Steak and mushroom pie. This place is an institution. Yeah. Beef dip. It's where I grew up. It's just become an icon. Yorkshire pudding. And so is second generation owner, Chuck Chamberlain. Chuck is a top one, period. Who took over the joint after his parents opened it back in 1926. When mom and dad started, they had no idea on how to cook. But then Western Restaurant was more of a meeting place at that time. But today, yeah. folks come for the food. Thanks for your love. And that's all thanks to head chef, Ann Zubaiti. Steak and mushroom pie up. Who cooked in restaurants around the world before moving to Canada. Because I wanted to learn Canadian cooking. Hey. That's what you say, right? Hey. Aye. 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 Now we're gonna do the uh, roast beef. Top sirloin, so I make a little scoring on the top. And then we're gonna put grainy mustard, Montreal steak spice. And we just massage it in. Roast okay. off in the oven at what, Jim? 350, about an hour and a half. We've got the beef dripping 
I'm going to scrape all this goodness from the pan into my stock pot. And we're bringing that up to a nice sizzle, adding flour. So we're making gravy. We're making gravy. And where did the au jus come from? We make our own beef stock. We brown we do. the bones. Of course, we brown the bones, and we make them from stock. Oh, look how dark and rich and beautiful that is. That's the back of the Camaro, too. It's doing its thickening, and it's done. Now do we start slicing meat? Would you like the big one? OK. Beautiful gravy over everything. Two knives and forks. Go ahead. Oh, mm, that's outstanding. Roast beef dinner. All right, what do you get when you combine a marine biologist and a chef? No, this is not a joke, you guys. I'm really serious about this. You get a funky little joint right here on the main street of Vancouver, Canada, that's serving up locally and sustainably harvested seafood. This is the fish counter. Two crispy oysters and a bouillabaisse. This is the place where people who know fish come for seafood. Your oyster pool boy. They'll tell you what's available, what's fresh, what's in season. They'll tell you the fisherman who caught the fish, and they'll tell you how to cook it. And that's just the fish counter side. That knowledge is dished out by owner and marine biologist Mike McDermott. And in the kitchen, Chef Rob Clark is cooking it as fast as they can catch it. And the cod, please. Together, they take their mission seriously. We demonstrate that you can have a local, responsible, sustainable seafood shop and still stay in business. It becomes, with our customer, an education process. Right. So it's education, conservation. I mean, you can look at our case. It's super minimal. I want to try it all. And we'd love you to taste the Kita salmon. That's a fish and chips. I've never heard of fish and chips done with salmon. The place is known for its fish and chips. I don't think anybody does it any better. Two-piece salmon. This is unique. You don't just get your random white fish. It's one of the underdogs, unsung heroes. What's kicking this off? Tartar sauce, simple, fresh ingredients. Regular mayo. Lemon juice. Cornichon. Ground up little pickles. Parsley, tarragon. Got it. Chopped capers, shallots, and a little bit of dry dill. This will just improve with a little bit of time. Yeah, about two hours. Next up. Batter. Up. Oh. Batter up. Oh, that's an American thing. Is that not you? No, we play, play baseball. baseball. I'm just kidding. All-purpose flour, rice flour, quite a bit of baking powder, quite actually. Quite a bit, for sure. Cornstarch, and a touch of salt soda water, a little bit of local beer. You're getting the effervescence from the beer, the effervescence from the soda water. So one of the techniques we use is frozen stainless right. steel plates that keep the batter cold. The colder, the lighter and airier it's going to puff when it hits the hot oil. Exactly. Love it. And what type of salmon is this we're going to use? Harrison River wild kita, caught by the Chehalis First Nation. It's a meteor fish. We're just going to batter this, put it on the cold plate, and we fry. So fresh cut fries. And what kind of potatoes are we getting? Local Kennebec from Langley. And then some wow. salmon. Fit for a king. That right there. That's got a good amount of flavor. Not oily one bit. And you get some great crunch. Batter's not too much. It's not competing with the fish. Carter sauce. That's a nice balance right there. Fries are legit. Give me the rundown on the slaw. Kale, cabbage, rice vinegar, and uh, celery seeds. Nice juxtaposition to the salty, fried, crunchy. Nicely done, my friend. I'm here to check out a joint where this guy is taking street food to an artist level. This is Oko. Putin hitting the past. When I tried the food the first time, I was hooked. So I've got the cauliflower wings. There's a lot of East Coast flavors from them, the East Coast of Canada. That's because Chef Mark Steele is from Newfoundland. He went from corporate cooking to catering to this joint. What does Oso mean? Orleans Catering Companies. Orleans is an area here. It's the East End, Ottawa. We take very approachable food everybody likes, but we make things from scratch using local ingredients. You get the burgers and the fries, but then you get the specialty things like the East Coast donair. Which is a familiar regional dish. It's ground beef that's piled together on a pita bread. Fired up with Mark's own culinary punch. The combination of the sweet sauce and the hot peppers is so, so good. All right, so what are we getting into? An East Coast donair. A where, what, what? It's a spin on a gyro made with ground beef. Now, this is our version. A little more pizzazz, more razzmatazz. Razzmatazz and pizzazz, what so did I get into? We have some ground chuck, about 70-30. Garlic powder, onion powder, smoked paprika, pepper, salt. This is the pizzazz here. Cayenne. This is pizzazz. Into the meat, fresh oregano. Throw this right on the sheet pan here. Just roll that out, throw it in the oven, 350 for about seven minutes. Now, the donair is something that you find throughout Canada. Especially the East Coast. But this sauce is yep. 
what differentiates it from any other beef meat sandwich type you slice thing. Absolutely. We start off with evaporated milk, sweet and condensed milk. Those cows are rich and thick here. Fresh garlic. Because that's what I always do. Evaporated milk, sweet and condensed milk, yeah. <laughs> garlic. Some sugar. I'm just going to add in the vinegar, and you're going to see this thick and Vinegar is going to tighten this up? Big time. This is where the magic happens. It's already starting to thicken up. I've never seen this. What do you think has happened here? Beautiful. Can we call Alton Brown right now? <laughs> this is an Alton Brown question 101. We've got the meat cooked off. Take it to the flat top. Grill the pita. Hit this Ride with some garlic butter. Dude, this looks awesome. Nice and thin and easy going. A little cheddar, crisp lettuce, a ton of sauce, and then some cherry tomatoes, sweet mini peppers, and sliced jalapeno, some more cheese. Finish it with our pickled red onion. There you go. Look at that. Yeah, huh? Don't you know? Oh, you got a little. That's the way it should be, though. No, oh, you bring a bath towel or have a car wash when people leave. They exactly. can just walk through it. Get hosed down. <laughs> Delicious, chef. The meat is what's the most impressive with the seasoning, with the crust, with the caramelization. But when you get the fresh vegetables mixed with the cheese, and then you get the little kiss of the sauce, it rounds it out. That is really good. Don't error in the pass. Best don't error I've ever had. Seriously. The meat is nice and juicy. It's perfect. Where is my sweet sauce? No, you can't have any more sweet sauce. A multi-generational spot in Ottawa, Canada, keeping a seafood tradition alive, it's Pelican Seafood Market and Grill. We'll come and pick up some salmon and take it home and prepare. Other nights when you just feel like going out and being pampered, come here and have lobster poutine. You come to Canada, you get big about the poutine. But this isn't normal poutine. Lots of nice, meaty lobster. The gravy, it's a lobster bisque blend. The combination blew me away. Poutine is typically fries topped with beef gravy with curds, but we're taking it to lobster. We're taking it to Lobster Town. Is there a lobster town in Ottawa? Now here, there is. Right here, right Now here. there is. Start with the stock. Put our raw lobster bodies right on top of our mirepoix. It's going to go in the oven. How long? Two to three hours. Deglaze it with the white wine right now. Right into the pot here. Okay. Water, bay leaf, and peppercorn. And how long are we going to let this go? Three hours. Next up. We are going to make the lobster bisque. Okay. Olive oil, white onion, red pepper, orange carrots. Because they're out of the blue ones. We got our lobster stock, and we're going to get this pureed. Say hello to my little friend. Thicken this up with our butter and flour. Roux. This is got the it. longest stock in the world. Time for her to go back in. All right, our brandy and our Jägermeister, secret weapon here. Right into our mixture and cream. This is the bisque that you're serving in the restaurant all the time? Yes, we're going to turn it into a lobster gravy. All right, start it up. Mascarpone and our cream cheese. We still have cheese curds to come. You got it. Is there a swimsuit season here in Ottawa? For about a month. That's when I'm not going to eat the cheese curds. Bring on the lobster. Let's take out our lobby straight from the steamer. Do you steam them for order? Yeah. And we see a lobster poutine. You're not joking. Fries. So we cut them by hand every day. Cheese for the gravy. And we're going to put the rest right on top of the fries. Gravy. Chives. What was the noise that just happened? You got to make that noise if you want it to fall nicely, you know? Never in the history of Triple D have we ever had a sound effect seasoning. I respect the full swing of the bat here. And I'm thinking I'm gonna get bits of lobster sprinkled inside of the poutine, but when you get it served in the body of the lobster, and this is higher end. Wow, I'm getting all that brandy flavor. Next level with the cream cheese and the mascarpone, great fries, delicious dish, well done. Right on. Lobster poutine. This ranks probably as one of the best poutines I've ever had. And believe me, I've had a lot of poutines. The sauce is super silky and it's perfect. This whole dish is so Canadian. 